Now I'm not muted. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to 360 iDev 2020. Uh, well, wouldn't be in uh, online comments without someone starting it being muted. Uh, thank you all for joining us. It's going to be a, a good three days. We have a lot of fun stuff uh, on the books for everybody. Stump is tonight. So uh, if this is your first 360 iDev, I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, further down, but it'll be a lot of fun. But first, oops. Uh, but first, uh, the one thing that we have, the one hope that we have for 2020, other than it end as quickly as possible, uh, is that we see true social justice reforms. Uh, 360 iDev, 360 conferences stands firmly with our black and brown community members. Uh, the time for change was a long time ago. The next best time for change is now. So uh, it's up to us to make that happen. There is, a, of course, a team involved in doing this. Um, Tom and Judy are my co-host MCs for this so that uh, you will not see have to see my mug every single time welcoming speakers and, and doing that sort of thing. So um, they will be around as well to help there in Slack if you need anything. Um, ah, there's Judy. <laughs> and a brief cameo by Mike. Um, yeah, they will be around. Uh, if you guys want to say hi, by all means. Or don't. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello. Very, very well done. And even though we're online, no conference would be complete without uh, some swag. So uh, I've created a shirt. Very stylish. Um, that is the link to buy them. They're for sale at uh, pretty much zero profit. I think there's about 50 cents just to cover any variances. Um, and uh, it's just a way to still kind of show your show your love and support for 360 iDev. Uh, the back has a little nod to uh, why the front is what it is. And if that icon doesn't uh, mean anything to you, uh, go find an elder in uh, the networking or the sessions or in Slack and ask one of us. We can explain it to you. Um, but fun way to, to show that you were still part of 360 iDev, uh, since there is now an official shirt to prove it. And, uh, with that, let's do this. I am going to bring on, doo -doo -doo. I have to switch screens over to, uh, Alondo's keynote and then we will get started. Hey everyone, and welcome to, uh, 2020 360 iDev. I am very, very grateful to be here. I wanted to take a moment just to thank John and Nicole for the opportunity to speak at one of my, literally my favorite iOS Dev Conference, if I'm being honest, even more than Dub Dub. I love being in Denver. I love the interactions and just the way that the conference has always been set up. My experience there has always been great. It's a little strange, I'm sure for myself and everyone else, that this is a remote conference this year. Uh, it's a bit different for me because this time I actually have an opportunity to participate, uh, something that I have not been able to do since 2015. And that's because I no longer live in the US and I have, though I've made trips back, it's not something I've done uh, very frequently. In fact, I have not been back in the last couple of years. And it's due to a lot of the things that I wanted to talk about today. So many changes have taken place in the last five years. And I think we can all appreciate and recognize sort of where we are right now. And one of the largest sort of changes that have happened, the way that we work, the way that the world is operating right now, we're dealing with a lot of change. It's something that is very disruptive. It's something that we're not necessarily used to. It's definitely something that most of us are not comfortable with. And so when I was asked to speak, I wanted to have an opportunity to say some things that I thought may be useful and may be helpful while also sharing my experience in the last five years in traveling around the world and making some new choices and some new changes. So for me, the last five years have been full of change. And this last, what, six months or so has just been, uh, while it has been disruptive and it has been uh, really surprising, there's some changes, a lot of it sort of flowed with what I've already been doing. So 
I was used to things sort of happening at the last minute, things being canceled, having to deal with things being in a state of flux that I'm not sure a lot of people have had to deal with. I've been dealing with that in my career in addition to just my travel. And so I thought it might be a good reflection, an opportunity to get into this and think about and talk about the things that have changed, the new normality, whether it continues to be the new normal or not. So just a bit of a uh, backstory, uh, before I left in about 2015, I was working remotely. And at that point, I'd been doing it for quite some time. I'd been working remotely for at least five or six years. I'd done some previous stints, but this was the longest stint of just continuous remote work. I started uh, years ago being you know, located in an office, working for companies. And then I took a, a contract job working with a, a company and ended up being remote again. So the remote aspect of it was something that was very new for me. I mean, very common and I was used to it. And then um, in addition to that, changing locations, even being remote, I was not the typical work from home person in that I didn't have one location from which I worked. I love travel. I love being in different locations. So I started doing a bit of that uh, years before I decided to leave the U.S., I was working uh, mostly out of Atlanta and North Carolina, where I maintained the home, but also working from other locations. And I would come up with reasons to do it. For instance, I watched a television show on the Food Network, and they were going to different barbecue places around the Southeast. And anyone who knows me personally knows I love barbecue. I am a barbecue connoisseur. So I saw that and said, I've got to do this. So I hopped in a car and I drove from North Carolina um, all the way to Texas and back, doing a big loop, hitting as many barbecue spots uh, that I could find that were representative of the region or locations that I saw on this Food Network special. So it was really important for me to do. I did other ones around poker. I did another one uh, via train. I just wanted to travel via train. So how easy would it be to code while uh, traveling on Amtrak train? And the answer to that is if you're not on the East Coast, not easy at all, actually, because the internet constantly doesn't work and there are always delays in trains and it's just it, it was a bit maddening actually it's very disappointing although i do think travel by rail is very fun is very beautiful way to see the country um, but just get used to spells of monotony and maybe not having uh, internet outages so maybe just save your your git pushes and things like that until a bit later but it was a lot of fun it was very it was a it was a great experience i learned a lot about myself i got comfortable traveling I started to learn what to pack and what to do. And then fast forward into uh, mid-2015, I'd heard about this travel program called Remote Year in which uh, 70 to my people in my cohort were traveling around the world together, a different country every month. And I said, well, that sounds challenging. And it'd be a nice break from what was going on in personal life at that time. I wanted to, to leave. I'd been in North Carolina for a while. I wanted to get away some 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 tragic things that happened in the family and it was just very sad and it was hard for me to physically be there so i said i need a change of pace i need to take a break and what i'm going to do is i'm going to travel the world i'll knock off you know things off on my bucket list which didn't have a long one but you know as you do and i said i would come back i would resettle and and open up a co-working space because i i do think that remote work is the future even then um, I wasn't, I don't think I was far ahead of the curve, but I think it was just a little bit ahead of the curve in that way. And so that year became an opportunity for me to get away and uh, learn some new things, see some new cultures, see some new countries, and also survey co-working spaces because every place that we went to, we were going to have a new place to work. There would be a co-working space. And so I could learn from how they were operating in these different countries. Like what are the things that are sort of the central tenants, the central properties of a good co-working space that makes people want to come in every day uh, beyond just a desk and an internet connection. So my goal was to learn about that and find out, okay, if I come back home, I'm going to make sure that I have the right type of environment, creating the right amount of community, the right amount of professional development, all of these things. Funny thing happens when you start on a journey and you say to yourself, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to do something different. I have this goal in mind. Once you start to make these small changes and change your location or change your perspective, it changes a lot of other things. And that was the biggest thing for me 
was that my perspective started to change. So I left and about, I want to say six months in, it started to look like the plan that I had was a bit different. I was starting to really enjoy being abroad. And at first I didn't really put a, I, I couldn't put my my hand my finger on it and say well, what is it in some ways i could i knew immediately in some ways things that were different that i was seeing my relationship in other countries and the way that i was being treated in other countries and that was a big big thing for me because i was used to, i've grown up most of my life in the south in the u.s so there's a certain way that things operate the certain speed at which things operate and i know i hear a lot of people come from the north or come from the west and say things are slow and 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 they complain about how things aren't like the big cities that they have come from and there's just this pace and i and it was nice to see in other countries that this pace existed like if you go to south america hey, things aren't moving that fast and even in southern europe things don't move very fast and I found it was the same thing in Asia and same thing in North Africa and it was just like okay I understand that but what was different was my interaction with certain institutions and I didn't realize that I was walking around with what I would call baggage my interactions with the police um, were very very different and I was nervous I remember the first time I was walking down the street in Buenos Aires it's like the second month I was abroad and I'm, I'm, I'm going and I pass these police officers on a morning job and I'm already just on alert just to make sure that they can see me. I'm running. I'm jogging. I'm not a threat. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm putting on all of the things. I've got headphones. I'm trying to like, you know, wave and do all these things. And I realized that the police were just like, what are you doing? Like the cop just looks at me like, what are you doing? And it was just weird because like I was used to having to sort of set like this, be this person that was considered non-threatening, where in these other places, I saw it again in Bolivia, and I saw it again in Peru, and other places, like, nobody really cared. Like, it wasn't a thing. Um, and so it was very eye-opening. And it was learning that, changing that perspective of just how I walked around in public and just how I saw myself in those interactions. And it was very free in a lot of ways. And the byproduct of that that change in perspective and that 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 lightening of that baggage was that now those CPU cycles I was burning for thinking about those kind of interactions didn't have to worry about it anymore. So now my morning job, I can just focus on maybe the technical problems that I was trying to solve or maybe trying to get some ideas going. And it's just like less, 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 more room, more memory, literally more memory to actually use to do some processing. And so it was it was very nice. It was it was very uh, a, a great feeling. And I said, okay, well, that's cool in these places, but I, I continue to see it place after place after place after place. Um, the other things that I saw was a difference in the value system. And I was seeing that like people's relationship to how they lived was different. So transitioning from domestic to international helped me to understand um, that the, even the workday was different. The way that people saw their jobs, the way that people operated uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I come from a culture where it's like very, very intensive and we're working very hard and we're always trying to gain and we're always trying to go and the next thing has to be faster and better and more. And I was meeting more and more people who just did not see the world that way. They didn't work that way. That when they got off of work, they left the job and then they spent time with their friends and family. I spent a lot of time in parks and it was very interesting to see in the course of my morning uh, exercise routine, whether it was a jogging or uh, used, uh, uh, some kind of physical workout, to see people in the parks and then to come back later in the day and to continue to see people in the parks and just how they were just uh, relating to each other and to life. And then later in restaurants and cafes and these things. And it just groups of friends talking, laughing, many families talking, laughing, walking around and enjoying their day. And it was very impactful for me. I, I really, it, it, it left a huge mark on me. And I decided about six months in that I wanted more of this, that like, this is what I really wanted. I thought before that I wanted this other success. I wanted app store success. I've written several apps to try to make this thing happen in the app store. And I wanted financial success, you know, whether it was the app store or just jobs working 
and I had things. I had the house, I had the car, I had the Tesla on order. I was like, all right, I'm, 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 I'm getting to this place. But I realized that as I was gone, just taking myself physically out of that location and changing my location, it changed so much of the perspective of what I thought was important and what I was working towards. It made me question all of this. So what I decided to do about six months in, I started to question whether or not I really wanted to go back at all. Like maybe I'll just lengthen this. I'll just keep traveling. I'll just, I'll turn this into an extended gap year. Maybe it's gap two years, <laughs> you know? So I went back home and had, had a visit, talked to friends and family and realized that, yes, this is, this is something I want to do. So I started selling my stuff. I remember leaving, I think I was in Serbia at the time. I left Belgrade and I came home and I started with one item. I sold a washer and dryer on Facebook. I put a message on Facebook. Someone contacted me almost immediately. They came over, they bought it. Then I mentioned that other things were for sale if they wanted them. And so I was able to sell a lot of things over the course of like three or four days. And which was good because I was only back for like a week or two and I was headed back to Serbia. And it was really, really cool. I started to lighten the physical possession load. That's the other thing about lightening the load and removing some of this baggage that I learned. I started to pack less, even on the trips as I was abroad. I left with three duffels and I was down to two because I realized going from country to country on travel day, you still have to carry this stuff with you. And so all of these things that you say are important to you, all the things that you value that of possessions you have to carry with you, that's real weight. Like in this case, it was real weight. And going to check in, there's a lot of times a limit of how much you're allowed to take onto a plane. And so you have to make some choices. It's like, is it worth an extra $50 for these extra items that weigh a few pounds every month? Every time you transition to a new place and go to the airline, then they say you're over. And so I started to scale back, scale back and determine what it is I really needed, the things that I needed to carry with me and the things that I could always find when I got to a new place. And that was interesting because getting to a new place, you, you're, you're starting over again in a, in a lot of ways. Um, I'm traveling with the community, so that helped. So I didn't have to make friends necessarily every single time, but there is a new routine. There's, a, there's sort of like you have to get into this, 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 this new routine of work getting up, finding your local markets, getting haircuts. I mean, I know it doesn't look like I cut my hair at all right now, but at the time I was getting haircuts. Um, and one of the great things I enjoyed about that was that finding a new barber and finding a barber who could cut my hair. So it, it was always, again, being apprehensive to say like, okay, I'm going to go to this new place. Are they going to be able to cut my hair? And it was very uh, surprising in some places and a big relief. Some of the responses from barbers, like a few barbers were literally like offended, like, hey, man, I'm a barber. This is what I do. Sit in the chair. I'll take care of you. Um, and they were really nice. It was like great experiences, too. I, I found fancier places to get haircuts than I ever had in the U.S. It was really it was really odd to see, like to be handed a whiskey uh, at a barber shop and not be terribly expensive, like still like a, a twenty dollar haircut or even better, like somewhere like Cambodia, where it's eight dollars for a shave, a cut, and a neck massage with a shampoo, which just blew my mind. But I say that to say that, so this, this changing of routine, I got used to changing routine. So I think the change portion became comfortable. It actually became the normal. The change became the normal for me. And so I spent a lot of time going through this process of questioning, going through this process of reevaluation, going through this process of saying, okay, I'm in a new place. Which of the values or the things that I found important, the things that I quote unquote needed, am I still going to carry with me in this new location? So after the course of a year, a bit more than a year, because I continued to do this process, I was also changing my perspective on what is home? Because once I learned to get comfortable in a new place and I had friends with me, then my sense of belonging, my sense of community changed. I wasn't nervous about being in a new place because I came with, you know, over 50 friends that I'm traveling with and we know each other really well, which would be tested a bit later. But 
I'd gotten, I had this, this level of, of stability in the context of all of this change. And that was important. I wasn't radically changing everything at one time. So even though my location was changing and the language was changing and oftentimes the, the script, the alphabet, the writing was changing. I'll never forget trying the first day in Belgrade, trying to get around and looking at street signs that were in Cyrillic. And I'm just completely like, I don't even know what to do with this. Like, I can't sound it out. Like in Latin America, I could sound it out and speak Spanish. I'm like, fine, no problem. And even in other parts of Europe, like, hey, this, this alphabet looks familiar. In this place, not at all. It's like completely new, everything's foreign. And so it was another challenge, but I'm facing this challenge within my community with friends and people I know. So it's a shared experience. And so it's a bit easier. Um, during this time, I questioned the job. And so I ended up leaving the job that I had. And it's literally one of the two best jobs I've ever had in my life. Like, I love the company. I love the people that I work with. I love what we were working on. I wasn't dissatisfied with it in any way, except that I think I was a bit burned out. I think I was a bit burned out on just working on the same code base. And I think a lot of people um, can appreciate that. You know, you probably even work for the same company or the same project right now for quite some time. And if you don't get an opportunity to do something radically different within the code base, it's really, really hard because you, it, it, unless you have a personal love for just refactoring, refining and bug fixes, it gets a bit old, it gets a bit stale. And again, this is the point where I think people start to look for change. So we're comfortable in certain arenas where we're saying, well, I wanna change here, right? We're, we're, there's certain types of change that even though as human beings, we're a little reticent to change, certain changes we like. We love the change where it says, hey, you get paid more next year. You're like, hope oh, down with that change. No problem adjusting to that whatsoever. We'll figure out how to deal with the extra money. Um, if you're bored with the code base and someone says, hey, you know that new API you've been wanting to work on or this new thing you're excited about, you're going to get an opportunity to work with it. Again, major, major excitement. You dive right in. But if I told you, hey, you're no longer coming into the office or we're going to have to change your location, we're moving to this other place. Those are changes that make us uncomfortable. And so it's a bit diff more, more difficult to deal with. And so I was fortunate in that I had a lot of stability. But at this time, right after I left the job, I actually had a client that I was doing side work with that I had a retainer with. Well, they let me go as well. And I broke up with my girlfriend who I'd been seeing. I met her on uh, the, the, the journey. And it was just like all of these things happening like right after each other. So now, despite the community, despite like this constant change that I'm used to, got thrown a couple of curveballs, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. And so it was really, really difficult to deal with. And that taught me something else. Despite the background of traveling the world and seeing all these wonderful places and the Instagram feed looking amazing, things were not going that great. So. Even if you change your location, even if you're working from the beach with your laptop, which just don't, it, it, it's not a thing. I, I, I jokingly post photos sometimes on social media about it, but I'm like, really, you, you're really going to be sitting on it. It's uncomfortable for one. Like, how long are you going to work on a laptop from the beach? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. anyway. So despite what it appeared to be, I was dealing with having to wrestle with problems that, you know, you're still going to have problems. You change your locale, those problems don't go away. You're going to have relationship issues. You're going to have job issues. And so I had to deal with that as well. Um, I had a friend reach out to me actually at one point because despite what I was posting and what I was saying on social media, he actually sent me a private message and said, I don't think you're doing well. Man. I think you're depressed right now. And I was just like, it was amazing because this is someone I met while I was traveling. And in that community, we had gotten to know each other well enough that he could actually see through all of the other stuff that was going on and really get to the nut of it. And it was really helpful. So um, if I could give you one takeaway, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, make sure you have people around you that care about you and that know you and that you can trust. Because at the end of the day, when things get rough, those are the people and they can be coworkers, they can be colleagues, they can be friends from school or wherever, however you meet them. But it's important to keep a circle, circle of people around where you support, truly support each other. And that means being honest a lot of times in ways that might make you uncomfortable because he and I have had some very uncomfortable conversations in the last year about a lot of things that have been going on. But he's still my friend and we're we just talk about things.
conversations. It's like we're just going to have these conversations and keep going because there's a level of trust there. So a support system is very, very important. But the perspective changed, the perspective on work. So now I'm, I'm looking at a new way. And I was meeting people who weren't programmers, who weren't uh, uh, project or program managers, who weren't in the technical space at all. These were people who were marketers. I met a couple of nurses who were traveling around the world. I met a couple of lawyers who were traveling around the world. I'm like, wait a minute, how are you doing this? And they were showing me I was able to see something different in relation to work. And that was without a technical job where you are sort of tied to the Internet, tied to computing, moving bits around. These were people who just happened to use these technologies to get information back and forth, having conferences with their clients, sending reports back and forth. And it was very, very enlightening. And so it made me think about my relationship to being a programmer. I am a freelance mobile app developer. It is part of my identity. It shows up in my bio. It's like part of who, how I see myself. And I just love coding. So I thought that by leaving the job and taking a break, going on a bit of a sabbatical, which I did for a number of months and getting away, it's like really understanding, it, do I really love this anymore? Is coding something that I really want to continue to do? Don't want to make apps. Maybe I should move into project management. Maybe I should move into another field, do something different. And it was sort of that evaluation about what is work, what is what is valuable to me. Now, Apple did something that they always do. They always put out some new thing that always pulled me in every single time. That's a, that's how I became a mobile app developer. Someone showed me an app on an iPhone. I was using a Trail 650, and I thought, you know, my big bulky you know, device with all the attachments, like, oh, it's fine. And then I saw this, this touch screen and what my friend was able to do. And I was just mesmerized. And then the iPad came out a couple of years later. Again, it's just like, and then we got Swift and I was like, oh, this is a really cool language. And then we got storyboards. And yeah, I know how a lot of people feel about storyboards, but I actually liked it. That's like, oh, this is a cool new way to do it. And so it was always this new thing that just allowed me to um, create something. And that's when I realized it really wasn't about programming per se, because I don't care about objective C or, or low level C or, or Swift even. I mean, it's a cool language, but at the end of the day, my connection was that I finally got to make something that someone else could use that I, that was tactile, that was real. Like I could hand someone a tangible thing. Like for many years as a database developer, I'm running SQL reports or crystal reports. Someone sees a report. You don't get that same level of like response from someone going, like, oh, my gosh, like I had so much fun reading this report. <laughs> it's like, no, that doesn't happen. Um, if it does happen, congratulations. But uh, has never happened. People appreciate it. It's like, oh, it's a nice way that you formatted this data. You got some insights by digging deep into these databases and pulling this stuff out. Phenomenal. But. I've never made someone smile or laugh until I started delivering mobile apps. And that's the thing that connects me to it to this day, gives me joy. I'm currently working on a game called the Reflexes app. And I was away in, uh, on vacation, although I'm in Medellin, Colombia, um, in Barbosa, it's a little, it's a little town uh, outside of the city. And a little kid lived at the farmhouse I was staying out in the Finca. And I showed him this game. And that's all he could talk about afterwards. Like every day he's coming, he's like, hey, I want to play the game, I want to play, want to play the game. And watching him play brought me so much joy. And it just reminded me, it's like, hey, this is why I do this. I don't do it for uh, the money because I'm not making a lot of money. In fact, the app is free in the app store. Uh, I'm not doing it for like accolades or an award or anything like none of that stuff. It's just that joy of this little boy playing this game just really made my week. Like I'm just excited and renewed. like, Oh, this is awesome. This is what I play for, you know? So my relationship to the work and to the creativity in that work is, is, is the connective tissue for me. And I think it's important to sort of, if you've lost your way in some, in some ways in your work, find a way to reconnect to it, find a way to connect with why your, why, why you're doing it, why you, why, you know, and it could be, I mean, the reality could be, Hey man, it pays the bills. Like, and there's no, there's no knock on that at all. That's one of the greatest things I've also learned about work while traveling. I love getting up early in the morning. And if I have my morning walk, all the street vendors and all the people are getting ready to start their day and their work helps other people. It's like 
someone who is like the canasta sellers, like you, those basket tacos in the morning, feed people who are also going to work. So that job has an immense amount of value. Um, you might not get the same reaction of some kid jumping up and down and laughing, although you, you know, we'll get someone going, mm, this is really good, but it's still incredibly valuable. And the things that it helped me understand is how we're connected to each other and how the work we do supports other people being able to go about their day. And so I have the luxury of working on a game, but the reality is that if you are providing real value, if say for instance, you're, you're working in the medical field or working legal or something, you're just keeping a business going that allows people to, to support their families. It's a very, very important thing. I'm able to free myself to do some other and creative endeavors, which sort of changed my perspective of how I see myself because now I don't even code uh, most of the day or most of the week. I'm probably only spending about you know 10 to 15 hours a week max writing any code. And the rest of the time, I'm doing some other creative endeavors. They might still be uh, uh, revolved around the business, but yet and still, I'm, I've learned by watching some of these other people that I've traveled with that they're how they're creating value, how they're uh, making a living, how they're making a life is very, very different. My friend TJ, uh, her YouTube channel is Cup of TJ. And when I first met her, uh, she said, I'm a YouTuber. And I just went blank, like, what is that? What is a YouTuber? How do you do that? How does that work? And she's like, yeah, I have a YouTube channel and I make videos. And then I started watching her videos and she travels, she was traveling around the world, but she loves street food. And she makes tons of videos about eating street food and eating food in different places. And she literally is like one of the coolest people to go around because like, I love street food too. And I like to eat. So our time, like hanging out in different places, is just amazing. So it was, it opened my eyes to like the possibilities. It's like, stop thinking. I had to stop thinking about my life and my work in a certain way. And it's like recontextualize this and think about like the things that bring you joy and the things that you can share with other people that can bring them joy. So I say all this to say in this per changing of perspective, changing my perspective on what is home, because now home is wherever I am, um, having a community being important and changing my perspective on work and success and how those things play together and what it means to be successful. Uh, the last one is just changing my perspective on freedom. Um, I grew up in America and I grew up, my dad's in the military. And so I was going to go on the same path and I still ended up working for the Department of Defense for a number of years. I believed all of the, you know, the news and, and, and the, the, the sayings. And it's like, we're number one, we're the best, we're the free, we're the home of the brave. It's like all of it. And thinking that it was the best place, like this is the best place. Like having not really been anywhere else, like been a couple of places, but no, 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 we're the best. We're absolutely the best. Hands down. How do you know? Ah, we're just the best. And I realized after traveling, it's like even what that means to be the best, what it means to be free is, is it's very subjective, one. Um, and two, the things that you're free to do, I really had to start questioning. As I said, I shared that experience. And then I came back home on my last visit, which might be my last visit. I was reminded again as I was driving a rental car of how I was seen in my home country. And honestly, I just had enough. I'm like, I'm not going to pay full freight to be treated like this when I know I can go somewhere else where I'm treated better. And I follow this uh, guy on, online, Nomad Capitalist. He, he, that's his catchphrase, right? Go to where you're treated best. And I don't know where best is, but I absolutely know a lot of places that are better. And so, and I unapologetically am going to pursue that. And I think everybody should. And I'm not saying by no means am I saying everybody should leave the US. No. But if you're in your job, in your neighborhood, in a relationship, and you feel like you're not being respected and you're not being valued, you owe it to yourself to change that. You owe it to yourself to either leave that environment or fight to change it where you are. Either one of those things are perfectly valid. In fact, you can do both. Um, so it, I, I want to impress upon you um, as we start relearning some new things. And I know I didn't really get into a lot of technical things. Um, I'm excited about a lot of technical things. Swift 2.0, I think it's just amazing. Swift UI is just like, again, pulled me back in in a lot of ways. But I think that if you understand 
and orient yourself on your values and what's important, it's a lot easier to do the technical stuff. It's a lot easier to sit at a desk and deal with Xcode's constant slow indexing when that might be the worst thing that happens to you that day. <laughs> you know, it's like it's a lot easier to face that and go, oh, Xcode, you're being your normal self and, and keep going. But if you're carrying all this other baggage around, it's like it just adds on. And, and, and I don't wish that on anybody. You know, and I think it's important to understand um, that you can make changes and it's scary and making these changes can change your relationship with a lot of people. My family still is asking, like, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? So I don't think you're coming back. And I'm like, sorry, I, like, I, I'm not coming back. It's not something that I want anymore. Um, but the flights go both ways. At least they did until April. <laughs> Um, and you can, but you're free to change who you are. You're free to renegotiate relationships that you have. Work relationships, you can renegotiate. If you don't like the way you're being treated, you can fight to be treated better. You can be, you can fight to be for more dignity because you deserve that. You deserve dignity. Everybody does. And so it's okay to fight for or go somewhere where you're going to get what you want. Um, there's a saying of a, one of my favorite shows is the character is not a good character at all, but it, it, there's this one moment of insight. He gives these young people in a scene. He's just like, you don't have to be here. No one tells you that until it's, until it's too late. And a lot of times we go through our lives believing that we have to stay in situations that we're in or that we're not allowed to change those situations because that's just how it is. And that's just not true. You can always, 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 make a change. I want everybody to have a wonderful conference. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in Slack channels. I'm definitely going to be participating in the Swift UI session on Sunday, kind of get that early start. Um, I love it. If you haven't had an opportunity to dive into Swift UI because you didn't think it was ready, I got to say, yes, it's not perfect, but man, oh man, it's really changed the way that I've worked with code. And I think um, it's worth a shot. It's another change, like maybe uncomfortable, but dive in, like, give it a shot. Like it's, it's been a lot of fun. And my new game is completely written in Swift UI. I just decided it's like, Hey, we're not going to dip a toe. We're going to go all in. And there are a few things that we're doing with UI re view representable, but slowly we're just sort of moving those things out. I'm super excited about uh, the new version and it being available this year. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful conference. I'm really looking forward to participating. Thank you for having me, John and Nicole. I really appreciate allowing me to speak and, uh, Let's make it great. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, Londo, for kicking off with an amazing talk. Um, that was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Like, Absolutely. I, I... Absolutely. <laughs> Anything you want to say to everybody? Well, yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to do both the... Um... Is that feedback? Am I hearing myself again? Yeah, but uh, oh, do you have the tab open? Oh, do I have it? Oh, wow! Hold on. Okay. There's a 15 second delay. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, I always have to tell speakers like, when it's your turn to be on cam, you have to either close or mute that tab with the conference on it when you're backstage. Oh, okay. Okay. So I think I'm okay now. I think it works. I think I'm in. Yeah, it cuts off pretty quick once you do it. Okay, cool. Oh, so how, how are things so far? I know this is like a lot. This is your second conference in what, a couple, three weeks, three or four weeks? Yeah, about four weeks. We did my Android event uh, end of July. So luckily it was a, it's shorter, so it was a good test run for iDev, which is my longest. So it was, uh, it was a nice test run, uh, learned a bunch, um, learned that I needed fast internet. So I, in between these two, paid Comcast more money for for faster internet. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. It's definitely a different experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> the joys of uh, the other upside of online events. Yeah. Well, I mean, so this is added because here in Columbia, uh, the last like month and a half, the internet's just not been great. And uh, so I've been having trouble just with like work 
work calls mm. and my regular weekly calls and everything, even even my calls with my mom and everything. It's just like, um, it's just crazy. So, I bet. Yeah, that is probably one of the unsung parts of going abroad. Is yeah, internet is very much variable. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I've been some places that are just amazing, and it's like better than the U.S. And then, you know, I love Bolivia. Like it's just, but it's horrible internet. <laughs> all right. Well, I will let you go. Um, all right. See you, sir. All right. All right see you.